here, uh, we have the angle, uh, uh, we have the angle subtended at the center here as 2A, and then the angle which is subtended at the circumference here at B is A. So just note, note where, where the angle is subtended. If one angle is subtended at the center and another angle is subtended at the circumference, then the angle at the center is twice the angle subtended at the circumference. So it is the same issue. when if you look at this one here, uh, the same thing happens. Uh, the major arc PQ, uh, the arc here, it is PQ, which runs from here up to here. Or if it is the it is the code, the code you can see it runs from here to here. So it is subtending an angle to the center here, and then it is subtending another angle, which is subtended uh, this side. However, these two angles, as you can see, they are not uh, they are not subtended in the same segment. They are in different segments. So when they are in different segments, uh, that's why the angle here, if this angle is y, then the angle on the other side is equivalent to to y. So that is the property about the angle, uh, uh, the angle which is subtended by the arc to the center and the angle which, subtend, which is subtended by the arc to the circumference of the circle. That is the property that relates those two angles. So take note of the properties because these properties will help us to answer various questions various questions, especially questions to deal with calculating angles uh, when we have circle properties involved there or angle properties of a circle which are involved there. Uh, the second property is that the angle subtended by the diameter at the circumference of a circle is always 90 degrees. So you can see uh, the line AB is the diameter because it passes through the center and it connects two points on the circumference of a circle. So so the angle which is subtended by the diameter at the circumference of a circle is always 90 degrees. So you can see that uh, there are these lines which are subtending an angle at the circumference, this angle here. So this angle is always equal to 90 degrees. So even if it was subtending the angle here like this, uh, still this angle here would be 90 degrees. Even if, uh, even if the angle was subtended here like this, like this, still this angle here would be equivalent to 90 degrees. So any angle that is subtended by the diameter at the circumference of a circle is always equal to 90 degrees. Uh, then the third property is that uh, equal chords, equal chords subtend equal angles at the circumference. So in this case, if the code, if the code DC uh, is equal, that is the code DC, uh, is equal to the code AB. Uh, you can see here, this is this is AB and this is DC. So if these two codes are equal, if we talk about them being equal, we mean their length is the same. So that means that uh, these codes will subtend equal angles at the circumference. So the angles subtended at the circumference from the code AB is this angle here, and the angle subtended at the circumference from the code DC is this angle here. So these codes, sorry, these two angles are equal because the codes which subtend the angles are equal. So that's why this angle here is X and also this angle here is X degrees because those angles are subtended by equal codes. And then the third, uh, the fourth property uh, of angles which are subtended, uh, angles which are subtended uh, in a circle is that the arc of a circle subtends equal angles at the circumference. The arc of a circle subtends equal angles at the circumference. So in this case, if you have the arc AB, if you have the arc AB, so this is the arc AB here. Uh, if I'm to draw a chord for AB, uh, the chord is this line joining the two points A and B. So all angles which are subtended from this arc are always equal. So you can see that uh, um, from the same arc AB or from the same code AB, uh, there is this angle which is being subtended. You can see it is drawn in purple. And then there is this one which is drawn in red. And then there is this angle which is drawn in blue. So all these angles are equal because they are subtended from the same arc or from the same code, as you can say, you can call it an arc or a code. So all those angles are equal. So even if the case is like this, when if the case is like this, uh, you can see this is 
uh, this one here, uh, this is this is AB. AB is the arc out here. Then this is the cord what they've drawn. So still the angle is being subtended. Uh, this angle here and then this angle here. So this angle uh, is equal to this one because they are subtended from the same arc. They are subtended from the same arc. That's why this angle here is Y, and this angle here is also is also Y. This one here. So they are equal because they are subtended from the same from the same arc to the circumference of the circle. Then of course, then of course, of course, for a for this one here, it is two y uh, according to the first property because this one here is sub this angle here is subtended to the circumference and then this angle here is subtended to the center. So that's why this is two y and this is y. But this is in accordance to the first the first property or of angles subtended in a circle. Then there is there is what we call the cyclic quadrilaterals or what a cyclic quadrilateral. So a cyclic quadrilateral is a quadrilateral whose all its four vertices lie on the circumference of a cycle. Uh, so for example, if you look at this quadrilateral here, uh, all, all its vertices, if you look at this vertice and this vertice and then this vertice plus this vertice, uh, they all lie on the circumference of this circle here. Uh, so that's why we call it a cyclic quadrilateral because it is it is inscribed within a circle. It is inscribed within a circle. It is inscribed within a circle. So there are also angle properties which relate to a cyclic quadrilateral, and these angle properties uh, we are also going to discuss them. Uh, so if we consider the cyclic quadrilateral below, as you can see, this is the cyclic quadrilateral. So the, these are the properties of the cyclic quadrilateral. Uh, the first one is that opposite angles are supplementary. So if we talk about supplementary angles, these are angles which add up to 180 degrees. So opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral, they are always supplementary. So for example, if you look at the angle W and the angle Y, so these angles are opposite. So meaning that W plus Y, uh, those two angles, they add up to 180 degrees. Uh, also X and Z, uh, these two angles are supplementary. That means that X plus Y, sorry, X plus Z, uh, those two add up to 180 degrees. So opposite angles in, in a cyclic quadrilateral are always supplementary or, or they add up or they sum up to 180 degrees. So that is the property of cyclic quadrilaterals. I think the next thing we are going to look